Thank you so much for coming to the house of the Lord this morning. The Bible says that them that appeared in Zion, they shall move from strength to strength. And that is your portion this morning in the name of Jesus. My name is Paul Monene. I want to take this opportunity to thank God for his servant, Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani and Pastor Alice, who are not here. Would you celebrate the servants of God even in absentia? Put your hands together and celebrate them. Amen. And the entire leadership and the pastoral team, thank you so much for the honor to bring the word of God. Amen and amen. Are you ready for the word? Uh, ask your neighbor, are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Now today you are going to preach with me. You know one of the challenges of this service is the heat. Joto enye kuhapa. So your body may be tempted to be an hindrance. sana. But we speak to our bodies that it shall not be a what? An hindrance. We shall preach together. The, 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 the remedy of not sleeping is talking and preaching together. Buana sana. We are still working on what? The Christian discipline. Somebody say Christian disciplines. We, and today we are going to look at the Christian discipline called worship. Christian discipline called worship. We'll be working on worship this morning. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, it will come fresh to you. Buenas sana. And to start with, uh, before we get to work on the Christian disciplines, we, we want to ask ourselves on to, or to answer this question. What is the objective of this Christian's discipline? What is the objective? Why are we learning about prayer? Why are we learning about fasting? Why are we learning about fellowship? Why are we learning about about evangelism. Why are we learning about all these things? And today, child of God, I want to submit this to you. The Christian disciplines, they help us to know God more and more. Somebody say amen. The Christian disciplines, prayer, help us to know God more and more. Worship helps us to know what? God more and more. And when we read the Bible in the book of Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 32, if you could give it unto us, Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 32. Let's read it together. One, two, three. The Bible says... Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 32. The Bible says, one, two, three. For those who do wickedly against... Aha, uh -huh. it shall corrupt with what? Flattery. Uh -huh. But the people who do what? Know their God. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Come on, let us read one more time the part B. But the people who do what? Know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. This is to tell you, when you practice these disciplines that we are learning, the result is what? Strength and exploits. Somebody say amen. Therefore, if you if you work on prayer, if you work on every Christian discipline, it does not just um, uh, edify your spiritual life, but the result is strength. Strength in your family, strength in your business, strength in every sphere of your life, and even exploits in every dimension of your life. Somebody say amen. Therefore, child of God, I want us to, I want to encourage you this morning that in as much as we are learning this, these disciplines, they may not be easy to practice them, but when you remember the result, when I pray, when I worship, when I praise, what are the results? Strength and what? Explain. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, if you do not practice these disciplines, you are condemning yourself to what? A weak life and a life that has no what? Exploit. Somebody say amen. You notice in this scripture, it is talking about the people who know their God, regardless of whether it is a Muslim or whether it is a Buddhist. And I want to tell you, child of God, the Muslims know their God. Uh, and they diligently practice this Christian discipline. Somebody say amen. The Buddhists know their God and they practice this disciplines. But it is so unfortunate that for us children of God, uh, we are so casual about practicing our Christian discipline. In, our, in the result of that, it makes that uh, we are not seen as people with exploits or we do not have the enough strength that we are, uh, we are supposed to have. Somebody say amen. And no wonder the Bible says that the earth is honestly waiting for what? The manifestation of the children of God. Uh, do you know that scripture? Did we do our Bible study? That the earth is honestly what? Waiting for what? The manifestation of what? The sons of God. Why is the word earth waiting? It's because we are not diligent enough to practice the discipline. Somebody say amen. But what is God doing in this season? He's looking for somebody. Uh, I said God is looking for somebody in whom he shall deposit the strength. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, in this season, God is looking for someone in who he'll deposit his strength. God is also looking for somebody who is ready to do mighty exploits. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, are you ready to do exploits for God? 
therefore it is not a coincidence that we are learning about this Christian discipline. The Lord is saying, I am searching. I am searching for somebody who I shall deposit my strength. I am searching for somebody who will do exploit. Somebody who have said enough is enough. I am going to do exploits for my God. Is somebody available this morning? Uh, come on, talk to me, Shiloh. Is somebody saying, I am available? I am available to do exploits. I'm available to walk in the divine strength of God. Somebody say amen. Now we go to worship. Worship. What, what, we talk, what, what do we mean when we talk about worship? And, and, and we will look at five areas. We look at, number one, what is worship? Number one, we look at what is worship? Number two, we look at the correlation between worship and singing. The correlation between worship and singing. Number three, we look at the attitude of worship. We look at the attitude of worship. Number four, we will look at the posture of worship. And number five, we look at the impact of worship. Buenas Fiesta. I've said, what is worship? The correlation between music and singing and worship. It is not just a coincidence that we sing. It is not because of the program. We will look at it today. We will look at the posture of worship. We will look at the attitude of worship. We will look at the impact of worship. And we, I will give you a homework to go and look at the levels of worship. Because I have 23 minutes, I will rush through all of those. But you will do your homework. So it's our sour. You go and do your what? Your homework. Therefore, when we talk about worship, what are we talking about? Worship focuses on the worship of a person. Or when you look at the old English, it speaks of uh, honor to an object. It speaks of worthiness to an object. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And therefore, even as believers, when we are talking of worship, we are focusing on who God is. Honor to God. We are, we are focusing on the worthiness to our God. Somebody say amen. It is different from praise. When we are talking about praise, we focus on what the Lord has done. Somebody say amen. But when we are talking about worship, regardless of whether the Lord has been good to you, whether you feel like he has not been good, or whether you feel that he has been, the week has been the way it is, if we are worshipping because we know who he is, because of his nature. Somebody say his nature. Somebody say his nature. Buona sana. Therefore, child of God, we want to separate. Praise speaks on the works of God, but worship speaks on who God is. Therefore, that's, what, that's why we see in scripture, the Bible says that the elders and the, and the creatures in heaven, they, they worship you and say, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty, and the earth is full of your glory. Somebody say amen. Because they are focusing on what? Who God is. Somebody say amen. Number two, we are going to discuss on the correlation of worship and music. Why do we, why do we have to sing uh, when we are worshiping? I mean, Colossians chapter number three and verse number 16. Colossians chapter number three and verse number 16. If you could give it unto us. Let us read it together. One, two, three. Give us in the NIV or in the NKJV version. Uh, let us read together. One, two, three. Let the message of Christ uh -huh, dwell among you richly as you do what? Teach and do what? Admonish one another with all through what? Psalms. Through what? Hymns. Through what? Songs. Through what? From the Spirit. Uh -huh. Singing to God with gratitude in our hearts. I want to take it, uh, we take it again. Uh -huh. One, two, three. I'll look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, you look like a smart student. Let us read together. One, two, three. Let the message of Christ dwell what? Among you richly as you teach uh -huh, and admonish one another with all what? Wisdom. Uh -huh. Through through psalms, through hymns and songs from what? The spirit singing to God with what? Gratitude in our hearts. I want to tell you this child of God singing or singing songs has a unique way. It has a unique way of focusing our hearts, our minds, and our senses to one person. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, singing has a way of focusing our what? Our minds, our hearts, our senses to what? To one person. I know I'm speaking to people here. Some of you are married for 30 years, 25 years, uh, 10 years, but I want to take you back to 1998 when you met that girl. Are you in there? If you're sitting next to your spouse, Mgonge Kidogo, Mambini, Weu Nambiwa. And we remember that we would either sing to them or take them to a place where they are singing. Ay, watu wa mungu buwana 
Ah, what was Mungu bwana siwe? Even this is part of our what? Our learning. Somebody say amen. And what was the intent? As you're singing, their minds is not diverted. It is focused to you. Ah, somebody say amen. Therefore, singing has a way of our minds, our senses, our our whole being being focused to one thing. We agree, children of God, that there are times you pray, but your mind is thinking about that debt that you've not paid. Ah. Si ni ukweli watu wa Mungu. Kuna wakati ambapo unaomba ndio unaanza kukumbuka wow 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 tomorrow tomorrow there is a meeting that I'm supposed to have but the truth is when we sing our senses our hearts and our minds they are focused to what one person and that's why scripture knew this the bible knew this and it says let you t- let us teach one another in songs in hymns and in what and in some somebody say amen ah gonga jirani help me preach your neighbor and tell them neighbor singing is not just a program it is biblical look for another neighbor and tell them neighbor <laughs> singing is not a program it is what biblical and if you're sitting next to your spouse and tell them neighbor may you refire the wells <laughs> somebody say amen so that is the correlation between what singing or music and what and what worship number three, we are going to look at the posture of worship somebody say posture of worship the posture of worship when we talk about posture we are talking about the position in which someone should hold their body during worship bwana sifiwe sana na hapa kidogo inakuanga this this is a bit uh, where we have war between the praise and worship leaders me being one of them and the congregants bwana sifiwe sana because some of us when we come to church we are stand we stand during worship like the gates until the worship leader is is made to feel, to say lift up your heads all you gates and be lifted up your everlasting doors that the king of kings may come in. At times we are not talking about the prince of the anywhere to Nambia that lift up your heads all ye gates because you're just standing as a what? As a gate. And we see all manner of postures. Ah, look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor. Today you are receiving your deliverance. Look for another neighbor and tell them neighbor. May you be delivered today. You shall not be the everlasting doors that the worship leaders talks about here. Somebody say amen. And you see because of the of the of the of the nature of worship leading hatufungangi macho unafungua moja kwa sababu pastor richard hapa anakuonyesha mambo ya masaa the band there you have to be together with them and therefore at times you look at people and you wonder my father and my god may you open the eyes of the understanding that they may see why do we worship somebody say amen therefore posture is important imagine pastor washo i am coming to talk to you and telling you how worthy you are how good you are how mighty you are and i am just standing like this i'm pastor washo ah you are very worthy you are very you know it doesn't make sense there is a posture somebody say posture ah gonga jirani mwambia there is a posture we do not see the muslim going to, going to the mo, uh, to the mosque and just uh, and just pocketing or just uh, looking like they they don't know what they are doing there is a what a posture lakini kwa sababu hapa kanisani hatuulizwi eh we take it for granted and we just joke around look at your neighbor one more time and tell them neighbor there is a posture of worship Somebody say amen. Number one posture of worship, we we uh we talk about bowing down. Somebody say bowing down. I am in Psalms chapter number 5 and verse number 7 in the NIV Psalms chapter number 5 and verse number 7. If we could read it together 1 2 3 to tusome kwa pamoja. But I by what? Your great love aha uh-huh, can come into your house in what? In Ah, come on let us read together one more time but I who it is I myself do what by your great love can come into aha uh-huh, in what Bev- reverence and what do I do I bow down what towards your holy temple therefore the posture of your body one of the postures of your body is doing what bowing down somebody says some some people here we sing uh, bowing down it's all and you still see you see them standing may the lord deliver you look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor may the lord deliver you may the lord deliver you may the lord deliver you somebody say amen number two posture it is kneeling down the posture of worship it is kneeling down i am in psalms chapter number 95 verse number 6 psalms chapter number 95 verse number 6 haha we read it together One, two, three. come aha uh-huh. let us do what bow down in worship let us do what kneel aha uh-huh, before the lord our uh, let us read it together one more time dio ingie come let us do what bow down in worship aha uh-huh. let us kneel before the lord our maker this is what the posture of 
worship. Somebody say amen. Number one, you have said number one posture is what? Bowing down. Number two posture, we have said it is kneeling down. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, are you being delivered? That next Sunday as you come to Shiloh Worship Center, your eyes will be opened up. And when we say we bow down, even before the leader says you will be already bowing down. Somebody say amen. Number three posture as we bring this to a close, it is lifting hands. Lifting hands. I'm in Psalms chapter number 141. And verse number and verse number two, Psalms chapter number one forty one. And verse number two, let us read together. One, two, three. All of us, may my prayer, uh huh, be set before you like what incense, uh huh. May the lifting up of my hands be like the what the evening sacrifice. And when you study the history of the Jews, they used to go to do to offer God worship in the evening, and that's what the Bible speaks of when it's speaking about the evening sacrifice. Would you? Give it to us one more time. We read together. Uh, 95 or 6. 1, 2, 3. Uh, 95 or 6. 1, 2, 3. May my prayer uh -huh, be said before you like what? Incense. Uh -huh. May the lifting up of my hands be evening sacrifice. Quite your number one poster. We have talked of what? Number two, we have talked of kneeling. Number three, we've talked of. One more time, number one, we've talked of bowing down. Number two, we talk of kneeling down. Number three, we talk of lifting. I pray for somebody in Shiloh Worship Center. May from today, may you receive that revelation. May you walk in that revelation. That in the name of Jesus, you refuse to be a gate. You refuse to be a hindrance. But every time you come to worship, you bow down. Every time you, every time you come to worship, you lift up your hands. And every time you come to worship, you kneel before the Lord. Some Somebody say amen. And that is the posture of worship. Number three, we are going to look at the attitude of worship. The attitude of worship. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, neighbor, are you learning? Look for another neighbor. Are you learning? The attitude of worship. The attitude of worship. I want to submit to us this morning, children of God, the attitude behind our worship should be an attitude of surrender. Should be an attitude of surrender. Buenas sana. When we look and understand, uh, when we understand the God we worship, the one and the true God, we come before him with an attitude of surrender. Somebody say amen. Because you know what? You cannot hide anything from God. Ah, you cannot hide anything from God. You can hide it from us. But the Lord, when he looks at you, he sees everything that is in you. Somebody say amen. You can you, when he looks at you, he can see the anger that is in you. He can see the unforgiveness that is in you. He can see the struggles that are in you. And therefore, when you come before the throne of grace, you come with an attitude of surrender. Somebody say surrender. I am in Psalms chapter number 139 and verse number 1. We read it. Uh, Psalms chapter number 139 and verse number one, if you could give it unto us, aha, uh -huh. let us read it together. For the director of music of David, aha, uh -huh. a psalm, aha, uh -huh. he says, What you have searched me, Lord, aha, uh -huh. and you do what? Come on, let us read verse number two, all of us. One, two, three, you know when I. Uh -huh. And when I rise, uh -huh. you perceive my thoughts far. Uh -huh. Verse number three, the Bible says, you design my going out and my lying down. Uh -huh. Num uh -huh. We continue, you are familiar with all my ways. Verse number that if, uh, four, before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. Verse number five, we are going to verse, verse number seven. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Verse number six, aha, uh -huh. such knowledge, aha, uh -huh. too lofty for me to attain. Verse number seven, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I feel from your presence? Child of God, the attitude of worship is an attitude of surrender. Somebody say amen. And that's why we sing, it's all about you. It's all about you. Oh, it's all about you. We say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to us. And, oh, and it's all about you. It's all about you. 
It's all about you, Lord. Come on, everybody. If you know it's all about you, see it. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord, for them. I've made it. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. One more time, Shiloh Worship Center, lift up your voice. And I'm coming back, back to a of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, for them. I've made it. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. And even to bring this to a close, we are going to look at the impact of worship. The impact of worship. We've looked at what is worship, the correlation between why do we sing. We've looked at the posture of worship. We've looked at the attitude of worship. And now we are looking at the impact of worship. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor. Gonga Jirani, who is look like they are sleeping, and tell them, neighbor, the preacher is winding up. At least catch one thing. Shika is in the The impact of what? Of worship. Or what happens when we worship? Number one, worship is the pathway to kingship. Worship is the pathway to kingship. Worship is the pathway to kingship. And I'm in Luke chapter number five, 4, verse number 5 to 8. We want to join three scriptures and, and, and put them together. Luke chapter number 4 and verse number 5. Luke chapter number 4 and verse number 5. This is Jesus when he was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. And he was tempted by the enemy. And this is one of the temptations. Or this is one of the tests that Jesus went through. Uh, let us read together, children of God. One, two, three. The devil led him up to a high uh -huh. and showed him what? In an instant, all the kingdoms of... Uh -huh. Verse number four. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and what? Splendor. Uh -huh. For it has what? Been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want. Uh -huh. And what is the... What is... Uh, what, do you, what was the requirement for, uh, for being given uh, the kingdoms? Verse number seven. We read it to do, uh, together. One, two, three. If you worship me, it will all be. And the devil knew that for me to give you all these kingdoms, it is not, I don't need anything from you. I will require your what? Your worship. Somebody say amen. And Jesus stayed here doing ministry for three, uh, three years. We are in Matthew chapter number 28 and verse number 18. And now when he died and rose again, Matthew chapter number 28 and verse number 18. Aha, if you could give it to us. Aha, let us read together. One, two, three. Then Jesus came to his disciples and did what? And said, aha, all authority, aha, in heaven, aha, on earth it has not been it was what it has what been given now and to you remember that was the devil speaking that it was his but now after death on the cross jesus comes and says that all authority in heaven on earth and as what has done has, has been done what has been given to me and now when we look at another scripture that was a prophecy daniel chapter number seven and verse number 27 daniel chapter number seven and verse number 27 this is daniel who saw the days that we are living in uh -huh, let us read together one two three then the sovereignty power and greatness of all kingdoms uh -huh, under heaven will be handed over to what the holy people of who the most high uh -huh, his kingdom will be what everlasting and all the rulers will do what worship i want to tell you child of god for you to be a ruler in this world you need to be a worshiper uh, I'll say I'll put it in this way. Show me a worshiper and I will show you a king. Uh, if you at all want to do exploits in this world, if you look at the, uh, the life of David, who was a worshiper, and every man and woman in the scripture who was a worshiper, they were kings. Somebody say amen. Therefore, maybe you do not want to be a king, but as for me, I look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor. Maybe you do not want to be a king, but as for me, I want to be a king. I want to reign together with Christ, and I want to be a ruler. Therefore, I am what? I am making up my mind that I shall be a worshiper. Somebody say amen. I want to speak to somebody in Shiloh Worship Center. You desire kingship? Worship is the pathway to kingship. You want to be a king in the marketplace? Worship is the pathway to kingship. 
kingship. You want to be a king in your finances? Worship is the pathway to... Gonga uh, Jirani, help me preach to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, worship is the pathway to... Uh, we are king. Look for another neighbor, Monyako, a royal church. Who knows that we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places? And if Jesus is a king, I shall also be a king. Ah, uh, because greater is He who lives in me than He who is in the world. Therefore, I am a child of the kingdom. Ah, uh, and I shall be a king. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I shall be a king. Uh, in my family, I shall be a king. Uh, in my marketplace, uh, I shall be a king. Uh, in my ministry ah i am walking as a king i am sitting as a king i am waking up as a king i am dressing as a king do i have kings in the house ah shake it elebosata i decree in the name of jesus the grace of kingship is getting released in the name of jesus one more time preach to your neighbor mwanyana kakama hajashika ikitumwambia worship is the pathway to kingship and now I have four minutes. I will bring the next two in the next four minutes and then we worship. Somebody say amen. Number two, worship opens up, allows us to encounter God's power and might. Worship allows us to encounter God's power and might. Worship allows us to encounter God's power and might. I am in Mark chapter number five, verse number six to eight. Mark chapter number five, verse six to eight. Now, this is a story of that man who used to live in the mountains, Garasin. Do you remember him? Look at your neighbor. Do you remember him? He looks like they have not done their Bible studies. They need to go and do their Bible studies. This was that man, the Garasin man. You remember him? And then Jesus does what? Appears. And see, let us look at what happened. This will bless your heart. Aha, let us read together. One, two, three. And when he saw Jesus from a distance, what did he do? He ran and did what? And fell on his knees and did what? Give us, uh, give us in the NKJV, uh, NKJV. I think that would do us well. Aha, uh -huh. aha. Uh -huh. Let us. Yes, it is. It is there. One, two, three. When he saw Jesus from a farm of aha, uh -huh, he ran and did what? He ran and did what? And worship. Aha, uh -huh. verse number seven. The Bible says he cried out with a loud voice. Aha, uh -huh, and said, "What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of?" Aha, uh -huh. I implore you that God, aha, uh -huh. you do not, you realize in this scripture, he focuses not on what the Lord has done, but he focuses on the nature of Christ. Uh, he said that you are the Lord, the most high. Aha, uh -huh. verse number eight, uh, give it unto us. Aha, uh -huh. for he said to him, now this is Jesus who said to him, he did say to him, come out of the man unclean. You realize in that scripture, child of, child of God, there was no negotiation. The man did not tell Jesus, deliver me. Ah, He just came and did what? And worship. And immediately he worshiped. The power of God was stirred up. Ah, there are times that you will come in this place to worship. And God knows in your heart that there is depression. And there shall be no negotiation. Father, wash, uh, remove my depression. He shall look at you and say that in the name, uh, by my power, that spirit of bitterness, that spirit of depression come out in the name of Jesus somebody say amen that worship stirs up the power and the might of God somebody say amen. and that's why when you look at the lives of our fathers who walked in miracles signs and wonders when they wanted to pray for people to be healed or they wanted miracles to happen what did they do they worshiped somebody say amen I am looking forward to a day at Shiloh worship center that as we worship I said as we worship cripples will come walking in the name of Jesus I am looking for a day that in the name of Jesus as we worship the blind eyes shall see I am looking forward for a day that in the name of Jesus as we worship cancer shall disappear we are looking forward for a day father do it in our day father do it in our day as we worship that growth that has been you have been battling with shall disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. We are looking forward for a day that as we worship, you shall receive your miracle. Uh, somebody say amen. Therefore, be as you appear in worship, uh, the power, the well of Christ uh, is getting stirred up. And he said, you know what, daughter? I do not need you to ask of me. I've already done it. Uh, I do not need you to ask of me to be, de be delivered from that generational curse. I will do it for you in the name of Jesus. Because worship stirs up the heart of God and it allows us to encounter his power and his might. And the last one, ministry team, I have 30 seconds. Munisamem, sinyandike koyo nini, buona swe.
watu wa ministry msiniandike kwa hiyo nini simu nipe tu dakika 5 nimalize kitu asante worship allows us allows us god's grace and to encounter god's grace and mercy let us do justice to this in the next two minutes and I am out of your way. Eh, wali nikulia hata time hapo kwa Holy Communion. Lakini si, mu menipia tano. Asante, asante, asante. Worship allows us to encounter God's grace and mercy. I mean Job chapter number one and verse number five. Number 20, sorry. Job chapter number one and verse number 20, sorry. Job chapter number one and verse number 20. Aha, the Bible says, let us read it together. This is the story of Job. When he was told that he has lost everything, the sons, the livestock, his property, and after the, all that he was told, this is his response. Let us read together. One, two, three. Aha. Uh-huh. Job got up and did what? And tore his, aha, uh-huh, and shaved his. Then he did what? He fell, aha, uh-huh, and did what? And worship. You can write this down. This is good for your Instagram page. Aha. Uh-huh. When the day of adversity comes, worship should always be your well of strength. When the day of adversity comes, worship should be your well. Of str- and I will tell you, child of God, adversity, trouble shall come to everyone. It came to Jesus. And he asked his disciples, and they told him, we want to see at the right hand with you. Are you ready to partake of my cup? It will come with many things. Trouble. It will come with blessings, honor. But also unto it, there will be trouble. The day of adversity comes to everybody. And the Bible says that in the day of adversity, if, you're, if you fall, then your strength is small. And therefore, that's why I'm saying to you, I'm giving you a remedy in the day of adversity. Strength, a worship should be your well of strength. Somebody say amen. If to, we are to be real enough, child of God, there are times that you will try to pray and do not be able to pray. I was listening to Reverend Kathy Kuna when she was saying uh, immediately after the, the, the bishop passed on and she was saying that she, she was not able to pray. There are times that you will not be able even to read the word. You look at the Bible and you will not see any writing. Because of the tears in your eyes. But when that day comes, Worship is always the well of strength. Somebody say amen. You remember songs like on the day of trouble. When you have received a, a report from the doctor that you have been diagnosed with cancer stage four, these are the songs to sing. Everybody say, When you have received a report that you have just lost your mother or your father, these are the songs to sing that give you strength. They give you strength in your body. They give you strength in your spirit. They give you strength in every being of you. For the Bible says that the spirit of a man shall sustain him, but a wounded soul who shall bear. Stand up on your feet as we worship. Rapa ko seke talaba, wami ni fuako. Shaka talaba, una kipimo shata. Na yo maseno ya. Come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Shake it up. Wani we. Come on, Shiloh, lift up your hands and worship her. Reko Sata, Yeko we are here to worship. We are here to worship. 
We are here to worship. Yeko Shaketa, Meko Sata, Yeko Shaka, Matendo, Yeko Soko Jolopa, Yeko Shaka, Yarapa Shaka. Come on, worship us. 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 Everybody worship us. As you worship her, may you receive healing. As you worship her, may you receive strength. As you worship her, may you receive deliverance. Ya Rabba Koshakata, Lopo Koseta, Yele Poshata, Repo Kasata. Worship sets an atmosphere for miracles. Worship is a setter of atmospheres. And right now, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice that in the name of Jesus, may the power of God come unto you in the name of the Lord. There are some of you walked in this place sick in your body. As I stand on this altar, by the atmosphere of worship, I decree healing upon your bodies. I decree refreshment upon your souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's some of you who walked in this place and you say, God, I need your mercy. I pray by the atmosphere of worship, may you obtain mercy from the throne of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. May the God of the impossible arise. May the God of the impossible arise. Let every barren womb be opened. Every, let every blind eye see in the name of Jesus. Oh, Sharabako Satalaba. Oh, Ninaya Kwani Wewe Upadiliki Roi Baba Yaku Baba yangu, wamini vu. 